it was a cold but very sunny day. And we were having a rally at the Audubon Ballroom. Two weeks prior to that, he had been banned from France when he tried to go to speak in Paris. The next weekend, his home was firebombed. But I always remember him saying, the way I feel today, I should not even be here. We said to him, then why don't you go home? Everybody can understand all the pressure you've been under. And he said, no, I really have to speak today. I heard Brother Malcolm say, assalamu alaikum, and next thing I heard were the shots. I ran all the way down the Audubon and jumped up on the stage. And his shirt was open, and I saw all these holes in his body, and he was gasping. And I remember thinking to myself, he's going to die, he's going to die, he's going to die. These brothers came up, had a roll of stretcher, because not one doctor would come over to the Audubon. They were right across the street, and they had to literally bogart a stretcher, and they rolled it back over to the hospital. Uh, it was announced that he, you know, that he had died. I stayed up all night. I was just sitting there. I was half crying. I was angry. The next day, I sat down and I wrote. I wrote about God. Brother Malcolm had the ability to inspire people, to make them transcend their own narrow interests and think, think of a larger entity. I think the human rights movement was derailed by the assassinations of Brother Malcolm and Dr. King.